Well, good morning everyone. Welcome back to Doing Outdoors. I'm Benj. And we're up the farm this morning on this glorious May day. It's not May day, but it is a day in May. And for a change, the sun is absolutely beaming down. We had thunderstorms yesterday. The day before it rained. In fact, it's going to rain in a couple of hours today. But I'm doing the rounds up the farm like normal but it's been busy as of late, really, really busy. Something we've not shown you just yet is that another one of the piglets that we had in this orchard pen was also pregnant. She's given birth to six piglets. They're all healthy and they're all just messing about right now. It's only just after nine o'clock in the morning. I've come round, I've given everything their breakfast but these piglets are really cute. They're nearly all pink, apart from one, which has got black spots. It could almost pass for a Gloucester old spot. And that's just down there with mum. She's tucking in. We'll turn you around so you can have a better look. So these little pigs were born, gosh, a week and a half ago now. And if you remember, there were two other piglets still in this pen uh, they were in this pen at the time she started giving birth so I quickly took them out and I took them round to the pen where Bruce is and then last Thursday those two piglets went off to the abattoir and I've been butchering those uh, over the last three or four days and you know what it takes quite a long time to butcher your own animal especially when you're going through it as finely as I do, removing all the bones and then taking the skin off for the bacon, etc. And because I'm not a professional butcher, it really does take me quite a while. I did half a pig yesterday and it took me about two and a half, three hours to get through half a pig. So that's been taking up quite a lot of my time just lately. Um, Another job that we've been getting done is, as you can see behind me, it's looking rather clear and you can see this massive brown patch. Well, there was a load of trees that had been chucked here from when we had the fence put in. That's been there since last February. And I've been waiting and waiting until we'd got a, a wood chipper to, so we could go through it all. Obviously the big logs we'll use for firewood but I didn't just want to burn all the brash. We need a load of wood chip up here. I've got a big pile in the wood from last year. A friend of mine came, he's a, a tree surgeon or arborist. He's got a massive chipping machine and we chipped probably two ton in an hour or so. But I can't keep getting him up here for free at least. He'll want paying, but we've got our own small chipper and although it's nothing like a commercial grade chipper it's doing its job and for the small amount of brash that we want to chip it's going to serve its purpose because we are trying to heat our house and cook on wood as typically through the winter time anything up to like the size of your wrist or the size of my wrist is being kept back for firewood so we're not mincing whole trees but we are getting some decent wood chip out of it it's quite fine so a good resource the compost bins now i'm gonna keep rabbiting on about these compost bins because it's one thing that i really enjoy making enjoy watching the cycle see how it moves through um so the compost heap this is the first amount of compost that we made. It started life in these two bins. A month ago, I consolidated it, turned it into this bin. Well, it got up to about 65 degrees Celsius. But for the last week, it's been around 50 and it's staying at 50. Hopefully it stays there for a few more weeks before it cools off totally. As you can see, middle bay's full end bay is full. The end bay was the first bay we filled. I've topped that up three times already. 
and then last week we filled this I topped this up again yesterday more grass clippings and more material off our old compost heap and these are getting really hot and you can see there they're running at 65 degrees it was as hot as 70 the other day probably a little too hot but it's making compost nonetheless so I'm really happy with the way that the compost is performing at the minute the only downside is that I need more composting bays and I've started erecting another bay on the end here I've had to use a couple of the panels just to stop the wood chip flying around but over the next couple of days we'll add another bay I'll get that filled my aim this time of the year because everything is growing so fast we're getting so much rain and the sun comes out intermittently but when it comes out it's really strong so the green stuff all the weeds all the grass is growing rapidly so I want to make the most use I can out of what we've got so hopefully next year I can expand on the no dig beds without having to buy in loads and loads of compost and I've just brought you back to this big pile of compost this is the original pile of compost we first started to make when we took over this piece of land and as you can see it has been layered with different materials but not as finely as I'm making the compost within the pallet bays there's a lot of brown material a lot of wood chip sawdust chicken manure pigeon manure there's old weed stems plenty of dock stems gone in there so I'm smashing all that down but you can see how tall it is with that spade lent up against it's about four four and a half foot tall it's a decent pile and you can see how much material I've moved already it basically was sat any area that, we, that is mud is pretty much where the compost heap was and I've dug it all away now and we've started dumping some more stuff this is some fresh pigeon manure with some rapeseed stalks so we're making tons and tons of compost we've got loads of material at our disposal so it'd be rude not to try and make as much compost as possible and in theory it should be some of the best compost you can get in fact this is a good sight mama pigs just feeding the babies she likes to spend a lot of time out here when the sun's on and now we come to peanut junior now she's doing an amazing job she's still got all nine of her piglets they're getting boisterous as ever quite curious and she's doing a real good job this this girl aren't you? and you're not losing any condition and you know what they've got a good number of piglets both of these I know she's got nine the other one's got six but when bacon had 11 last year it really took a toll on her body feeding all 11 whereas these they've not lost any of their condition they're looking really good and then we've got the no dig beds we built these just the other week as you saw on the video and I've gone ahead and planted them out just with what was available or what needed to go out from out of the greenhouse we've got the onion plants grown from seed but then I repotted them on into the modular trays we've got some lettuce two different types we've got some dwarf French beans some more onions these are the same onion seeds however these stayed in the trays and I've just put them in their final position the other day I've got a blank spot on all three bays which I'm going to be putting some carrot seeds in very soon and then we've got some sweet corn at the end but I have been getting attacked by slugs or snails and you can see here a glistening trail that runs off through there and I've lost at least one lettuce from over the other side so I need to get some sort of slug protection down but everything else 
seems to be doing well. And the way I've planted these beds out isn't how I would normally plant them out. I would usually use one bay for a particular plant, say one bay for all onions, another bay for all lettuce, another bay for all beans. But because I'm doing this experiment, I've got the three different growing medias. I just want to see which one outperforms the other. If any, they might all do as well as each other. We'll just have to wait and see. And the reason I've only got 10 onions at the end is because we've got loads of onions at the beginning. I've got loads of onions at home. So I don't want many more onions, but I did want to see if transplanting the onion seeds into modules or leaving them in the trays, I want to see which one grows the best. And just whilst we're talking gardening, you can see I've actually erected the frame of the second greenhouse that we bought up here. I've got to build a frame for it yet, for it to stand on. That's the only thing from stopping me getting it into its final position, which will be directly facing the greenhouse that we have and getting that glazed. I'm gonna to need to pull my finger out on that one because there's loads of plants within the greenhouse, the tomatoes and the peppers that they're gonna want putting in their final position very soon. And then we come to the potatoes that we're growing in pots. Again, another experiment. We've got the wood chip on the right as I'm looking at it, and then the shop-bought compost. And still you can see that the potatoes growing in the sieved compost the plants, the tops are massive, easily twice the size of the shop bought compost variety, which for me is an indicator that they're going to do better. But again, we're not going to know until they come out of the soil and uh, we count the potatoes or weigh the potatoes, but already they're looking very strong. But one of the biggest changes that's gone on around here very recently on Bank Holiday Monday, just gone, we drove to ross on wye which is 110 miles away from here. We went to look at some Dexter cows. In fact, the main reason for going over there was to purchase a Dexter bull. They had a two-year-old proven Dexter bull um, amongst other cows that they wanted to get rid of. However, when we got there, the people selling the herd uh, said that they wanted all the cows that they had to go together, which was the bull, two cows, four calves. Uh, and the best thing about it was, is that they didn't want any extra money. All they wanted was, what was discussed was payment for the bull and the cow and calf. So we ended up coming away with the whole herd. So we've got nine head of cattle. The two girls that we had previously, <clears throat> we've got a bull, another two cows and four calves. The calves actually vary in age and in colour and it's uh, quite a good sight. The cows that we bought in, unfortunately, are lacking quite a bit of condition and they're going to need some feeding up especially when you see them next to ours although ours are probably just on the fat side but here they are we've got a full herd of dexter cattle now but you can see they're not looking in the best shape. <clears throat> if I'd driven, the photos didn't really do the cows or show the cows in their true light. But we'd driven 110 miles. So we were coming back with something. We'd already invested a load of time and money just getting there. But you can see that's one of our girls just there. Nice rounded body. The bull's just walking behind. And you know what? Within five or 10 minutes of the bull being in the field, he'd already served 
one of our cows and was sniffing around the others. It was quite a sight. Once we let them out the trailer, our cows were around the back end of this field. We released them around the other side of the copse, but as soon as our cows caught sight, I don't know whether it was the bull or just the sight of more cows in the field, they came bounding over, hopping, skipping and jumping. It was like they were reunited with some long lost family members. It was a real good sight to see. But the bull, Fergus, is a handsome looking chap. Not as muscular as he could be, but we'll feed him up. The sheep are coming over and they're not too sure of the sheep. What's up the moos? You're not scared, you know who we are. So that's one of our girls and you can see the back end of one of the other cows that we bought in. Again, lacking quite a bit of condition for, for me. Some other people out there who know cows better than I do might think they're okay. But that's one of our girls. Definitely on the fat side. But you look good, don't you? But it just means now that we've got a head start now on the beef production. The two lightly coloured calves, they're both bull calves. They are still intact. So first job is I'm going to get them both castrated and, and they'll go for meat. The other two calves that we have are heifers. Uh, once I've got all the paperwork sorted out and they're of a decent size, I'll be selling them on. I don't think because they are the daughters of Fergus the bull, so he can't cover them again. So they'll need to be sold. But if the other two girls that we bought in and our two girls are successful, we'll have four breeding cows, which should give us four calves a year. Uh, which will be more than enough to keep us in beef. Look at these sheep, they're like well trained bloody gun dogs. They'll walk to your heel, no matter where you go. What's up, little Lambo? Come on then. What's up, little Lambo? The only problem for little Lambo is, is that the other one tasted so good, he's going to be next. Now this guy is definitely the family favourite. He's more like a pet than anything else, aren't you? A big softy. But everyone likes the taste of lamb at the minute and he's got no tackle, so he's not gonna be much use to us, unfortunately. So you're next, aren't you, pal? You're gonna be next. But at least he's had a, he'll have had a good life. He gets plenty of loving, that's for sure. And he's got good food. So we've only had these cows on the farm a couple of days. So we're just taking it easy trying to let these cows get used to us and Fergus likes to have a bit of a lick every now and then you're a nice lad aren't you still wants a bit of meat on his bones but we'll definitely get them back up to a better condition not as fat as our cows I didn't realize how fat they were until we brought these cows on um, granted I think they are under condition but our guys they're over over fat don't think it's going to bother them I think they should still be able to conceive 
but we are definitely up to a number of cows to, to where we want to be the ground won't be able to take any more than this I'm pretty sure so it's been a real it's a real leap forward for us getting all these cows on we're going to be looking to slaughter the the bull calves probably at about 24 months so they are quite young at the minute so we've got two years at least before we can get any meat out of these guys but the two cows that we bought in might actually be in calf because they were still running with the bull and if he was successful covering our two girls the other day which was the 8th of May that will give them a due date of around the 14th of February <clears throat> so although beef won't be on the menu for quite a while yet I'm hoping that these cows become friendly enough that we can milk them and then that will give us access to fresh raw milk the production of cheese cream yogurt quite looking forward to all that I think the only animals we haven't spoke about this morning are Bacon and Bertha. They're doing well. However, Bacon is due to give birth any day now. She's getting rather, rather big. You can see the area around her teeth starting to swell, which shows that she's starting to produce milk. And she's getting a lot slower walking around. She's just been laying down then in the sun. What's up, Bakey? It's not going to be long, is it, kidder? Hey, up. Hey, up. He's going to try and push me over, using me as a scratching post. <laughs> and then, Big Bertha is going to be a week after Bako. Oh, she wants her belly rubbed. Yes, you want the fuss as well, I know. They've trapped me. I'm stuck between a big pig and a bigger pig. Let's give you a belly rub. Hey, are you feeling all uncomfortable? All uncomfortable and pregnant. With three babies squirming. We might have a couple of days yet. I can't do anything. You've trapped my leg between the two of you. Haven't you? Hey. What a nice piggy. What a nice piggy. And you, Bertha. You're a nice piggy and all. Well, that's about all I've got time for on this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.